everybody, it is Brian at Summit Racing today, and we do some video segments on engine building and how-tos all the time. And then a lot of times we have vendors like Lake Speed here from Total Seal who drop in and just happen to be here today. Just happen to be here today. And we knew he was coming in, so we had some cool subjects that we have not talked about before. And one of them is the subject of ring filing. So there's a lot that's changed in you know ring filing, you know, really over the last you know, 30, 40, oh, 50 years. Yeah. And a lot of it boils down to the materials, but mm -hmm. I mean, you're Mr. Ring, so talk to us about you know what you've seen. Well, you said we were, in a previous video we mentioned that ring end gaps yes. have changed a lot, and just those exact reasons. Ring materials have changed. We've gone to boosted applications and nitrous and E85 and all these different things we're right, doing to right. engines now. So with different materials, different end gaps that are needed. Okay the evolution of the ring filers actually come along a bit too. Because, you know, the old hand crank thing in the day worked just fine when you had a ductile iron or a cast iron yeah. ring that was fairly soft and you could sit there and crank away at it and go back and forth and check it. And, you know, you weren't trying to be too precise in terms of how close that gap was and how straight and square those it, end gaps it was were. right it, it was big enough to not butt and that's about all they cared about at that, that point that was getting the job done right it was uh this is a measuring tape over here is probably more like a, you know uh, digital micrometer exactly it, it's it's a little bit more precise and that's what you really see is you you go from here to to the power ring filer the precision increases greatly yes accuracy increases other thing too is in today's steel rings these steel rings, hard. you don't want to even attempt to grind one of these. You'll with that. be there for 30 minutes with this thing grinding and grinding away. And then you'll go back to the bore, you know, because it takes some time. You know, you got to go ahead and put the thing back in the bore and you're going to be in there with your feeler gauges and you'll be like, I've been here for five minutes and I've opened it up a thou and a half and I've got another 10,000 to go. Right. So Not at least good. the electric one will save your arm a little bit, but, but you're still back to the same thing of, okay, how much further do I have to go? How do I creep up on it? The really great thing about the power ring filer, yes. How much end gap do I need to open it up? I've already measured it in the bore. Yep. I know what it is now. Yep. I need to increase it by X. Oh, I just dial it right here and I turn the knob until I see my number and then I drop it in and I'm done. Right. So that's the other cool thing is, you know, with a machine like this, you know, you're basically having to take this and you're putting it on there and you're kind of squeezing it together mm -hmm. and it's not square. I mean, it's up and down sideways, <laughs> it's wonky. Uh, you know, you put it in the bore and it just it just looks absolutely terrible. Yeah, uh, it's this. <laughs> versus this. Now, the, the purpose of this knob on mm -hmm. this is it actually moves in and out on the right. slide. And so it basically will clock that ring mm -hmm. into position. So it's exactly. it absolutely perfectly parallel to the grinding wheel. You keep talking, I'm gonna demonstrate while you're talking. All right. So, and on top of that, so even the grinding wheel that you use on a high-end, you know, grinder like this mm -hmm. Summit, you know, Pro Ring Filer, is the wheel isn't necessarily perfect when it's brand new from the factory either. So there's actually a dressing tool on this thing, which is actually in the machine. It's, we'll get you a little bit of a picture of that, but we actually will dress the wheel and then it's absolutely parallel mm -hmm. and perfect to the end of the ring. And then we start doing our ring filing. And then like you're saying, I mean, we are taking a tremendous amount of time and, you know, it's just, oh my gosh, it's such the, a The factor. setup, that's what was great about this. Like you said, you've got the squaring tool here. You can dress the ring. This squares the ring to the holder. Right. Now you've got all these fixtures. You Once you've located it, now you don't have to do it again. Every ring, if you're doing a V8 or a V12, you can sit there and just drop them on. Tops and seconds. Right, and you've got the dial in indicator, so you, you know what to set it to, and then you just say, I, I, don't, I want to take, you know, two thousandths off this thing, I dial it the two thousandths, chop. Yep. And it's done. And the other great thing is, it also has a deburring wheel. Yes. So where these can leave little chip torn edges, and sometimes people have leaked down an engine brand new before taking off the dyno, and or put it even on the dyno, is that, Oh, you know, these cylinders leak really good. That one cylinder leaks really bad. 
and it's completely well. scraped up. Right. So, so any little burr, especially on the very outside of this edge, bites into your cylinder. It's going up and down at 7,000 RPM. It's leaving scratches all the way. It ruins the engine. So the deburring uh, wheel that oh, a machine like yes, this has. It's great. Yeah, because once yeah. you've taken the ring so, out of here, <laughs> yep, spin it up, just touch it. You can deburr it. Super easy. Yeah. And it's, well, it's just, again, it's fast, it's precision, and it's the right way to do it essentially and with the steel rings it's really the right tool for the job so then it's a matter of like well how many engines are you going to do in the course of a lifetime the fact is and this is something i mean i've been working with machine shops for basically 30 years now and they used to have a lot of skilled people the number of skilled machine shops out there now you get less and less every year and on top of that the, the people that you have there, you know, if, if every guy that could be that 65 year old guy there that's been filing rings for 65 years, you know, mm -hmm. or all of his life, that's the guy you want. Right. You know, you don't want somebody that's just kind of new to this doing your stuff. So that's why here at Summit Racing, we're seeing more and more people invest in the tools so that they can do the job themselves to their own specification. And it's not just piston rings, there's all sorts, we're selling more engine building tools now than we ever have. It's right. because people want to do their own work because exactly. they can't find good ring shop or good machine shops. Mm -hmm. And the machine shops that there are out there, it's kind of hit and miss in well, terms of the people. A lot of them people. are super busy too, right? I mean, they're, they're yeah. crazy busy that, you know, obviously buying a hone yes. is one thing. Yes. Buying a ring file is something completely different. You can take your block to a shop and have it decked have it board, have it line board, do all the things to get that block geometrically correct, then you can bring back home and for a small investment, have all the right tools to do the assembly yourself so that you know that all those things were done the way you wanted it done. Well, and I don't know about you, but I'm actually renting out my tools to a lot of my friends. You know, the guys that I know that I can trust with mm -hmm. it. You know, so it's like I paid for it, but once I show them how well the tool works the very first time, right. you know, I either, they pay me for the work mm -hmm. or I lend them the tool and make, mm -hmm. you know, enough money to recoup my costs. Right. You know, and especially in the days of, you know, gapping rings on your LS where that may be the only thing standing between you and 750 horsepower of the wheels is, you know, gapping the rings, you can pay for one of these machines very, very quickly. Exactly. So anyway, you know, selling the machine, great, whatever. But I'm telling you as a tool guy, once you use these tools, you never will want to do it any other way again. So and we probably should mention that these actually come in from pretty cool colors. All too. right. All right. So, so, <laughs> so this is something that was a little bit of our crazy at Summit Racing. This, this design is a very, very proven design. When you use it, it's the absolute best. There are some grinders out there that I've been using for 20, 25 years that I thought were just awesome. I had the chance to run one of these for the very first time uh, about four years ago. And I, I bought one because I had to have it. It's like, well, how do we improve upon this? Well, Henry Ford, you know, <laughs> any color exactly. as long as it's black does not yeah. apply when it comes to tools. That's why you see black toolboxes, red, blue, yellow, orange, purple. you know, purple, <laughs> white, you know. So what we did is it's like, well, you know, we're going to go ahead and put some ring filers on the shelf. We're going to have them in every color. And then not only that, we're like, we're hot rodders. People want really, really nice stuff. I will spend Candy the extra. Cow. Candy Apple Red. Who's ever done that? Summit Racing's done that for you because we're exactly. just like that. So at any rate, trust me, you'll be like, it's an extra 20 bucks, but I really want that, you know, it's plum so crazy it. purple or that lime green. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. crazy. So anyway, we got together with these guys when we did this whole project and it's been a lot of fun. Made in the USA. Very, exactly. very big part of, of uh, many things here at Summit Racing is made in the USA by our craftsmen. Yep. You know, every step of the road, you know, the, the steel, the people doing the bending, mm -hmm. the people doing the coating, yep. uh, you know, just putting these machines together. You know, it's something, it's weird to call a tool heirloom quality, but it is. You know, if, are you going to hand this to your grandkids and be like, grandson? I'm giving you my special ring father. You're not going to do that. That thing's going to, no, it's you not going to happen. You wouldn't wish that on anybody, to be honest, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to your grandson. That thing, on the other hand, is heirloom quality. It's just, you know, if you're going to have one in your garage, it's pretty awesome. So with that, I guess we've talked about ring filers a bit. If you have any questions, you know, put them down in the comments. We have guys like Lake here that oh, yeah. you know, can help us with any of this stuff. So for more great content, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, because we have all sorts of cool tech videos and how-tos. Blake, thank you for dropping by. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate the opportunity to be here and 
Hope everybody enjoyed the video. Good. See you.